The information in this video is based on the most current information available at the time of production. While affordable safety training works hard to make sure these materials are current, the employer has sole responsibility for compliance with all laws, regulations, and standards. This video is sold with the understanding that AST is not providing professional or legal advice. Employers should have a reliable source for current regulatory information and best practices. Bloodborne pathogens are pathogenic microorganisms that are present in human blood and can cause disease in humans. These pathogens include, but are not limited to, the hepatitis B virus, HBV, and the human immunodeficiency virus, HIV. Bloodborne pathogens are transmitted in human blood and other fluids that may contain blood. This may include semen, vaginal fluid, vomit, feces, and other bodily fluids. OSHA considers these to be potentially infectious materials, which should be treated the same as blood. Bloodborne pathogens are spread when blood, or potentially infectious materials, contact a worker's mouth, nose, eyes, or broken skin. Needle sticks are the most common source of exposure. Cuts from contaminated sharps, such as broken glass, are another frequent source of exposure. The human immunodeficiency virus, HIV, is the virus that causes AIDS. It is spread through blood to blood and sexual contact. HIV weakens the immune system and makes a person highly susceptible to illness. There is no cure for AIDS. Hepatitis B is a virus that attacks the liver. It can cause cirrhosis and liver cancer. It is mostly transmitted by sharing needles or having sex with an infected person. Symptoms include fatigue, abdominal pain, loss of appetite, yellowing of skin, and vomiting. OSHA 29 CFR 1910.1030 requires employers to Establish an exposure control plan Require the use of universal precautions. Identify and use engineering and work practice controls. Provide appropriate PPE. Make hepatitis B vaccinations available. Use signs and labels to communicate hazards. Provide information and training to employees. Maintain medical and training records. Provide medical evaluations for exposure incidents. Employees who have occupational exposure to bloodborne pathogens must be protected. Occupational exposure is defined by OSHA as reasonably anticipated skin, eye, mucous membrane, or parenteral contact with blood, or other potentially infectious materials that may result from the performance of an employee's duties. Medical, dental, and janitorial professions often have bloodborne pathogen exposure. First responders, food preparation, and childcare also frequently include bloodborne pathogen hazards. Determining if you have occupational exposure is simple. If your job task includes blood, or other potentially infectious materials, and you can be exposed to them, you have occupational bloodborne pathogen exposure. The employer must perform an analysis to determine job classifications where all employees have exposure, classifications where some employees have exposure, and a list of all tasks and procedures that include occupational exposure. Bloodborne Pathogens Prevention and Control Measures 
there is no way to determine if someone has an infectious bloodborne disease. Workers must assume that all blood and OPIM is infectious. This is known as universal precautions. Universal precautions are followed in medical facilities and must be used anywhere occupational bloodborne pathogen hazards exist. If you encounter blood or other potentially infectious material, assume it is hazardous and use appropriate protective methods. Hepatitis B is a commonly transmitted bloodborne pathogen. Fortunately, there is a vaccine available that can minimize the risk of contracting this disease. Employers with occupational bloodborne pathogen exposure must make this available to employees at no cost. It is not required, but it is one of the safest and most effective prevention methods available. Engineering controls are devices or equipment that isolate or eliminate the bloodborne pathogen's hazard from the workplace. There are many common types of engineering controls. Sharps disposal containers provide a safe method for disposing of contaminated sharps. These objects, such as needles, razors, or broken glass, must be disposed of in one of these designated containers. Self-sheathing needles allow workers to cap needles without exposing themselves to the risk of a needle stick. Engineering controls are the preferred method for dealing with bloodborne pathogen hazards. The employer is required to regularly evaluate the availability of engineering controls and implement new controls as they become available. Work practice controls reduce the likelihood of exposure by altering the way a task is performed. The most common work practice control is frequent hand washing. Regular cleaning and decontamination of the work area is another work practice control. The employer can also prohibit unsafe practices such as eating or drinking in a contaminated area, smoking or touching potentially contaminated sharps. Personal protective equipment provides a barrier between the employee and potential infection. PPE is a common method of protection. However, the employer has the responsibility to try and eliminate the hazard with engineering controls. If the hazard cannot be eliminated, then PPE can be required. Common PPE include gloves, face shields, masks, safety goggles, and protective clothing. The employer will provide work area specific training on the selection and use of personal protective equipment. The workplace must be maintained in a clean and sanitary condition. The employer shall implement an appropriate written schedule for cleaning and decontamination based upon the location within the facility type of surface to be cleaned, type of soil present, and tasks or procedures being performed in the area. Contaminated work surfaces shall be decontaminated with an appropriate disinfectant, after completion of procedures, immediately or as soon as feasible when surfaces are overtly contaminated, or after any spill of blood or other potentially infectious materials, and at the end of the work shift. Disinfectants must be EPA approved. OSHA allows for a disinfecting solution of one part bleach to 10 parts water. Warning labels must be placed on containers of regulated waste, refrigerators and freezers containing blood or other potentially infectious material, and other containers used to store, transport or ship blood or other potentially infectious materials. These labels must be fluorescent orange, or orange and red, and include the biohazard text and graphic. Red bags, or red containers, may be substituted for labels. A bloodborne pathogen exposure incident occurs when blood, or other potentially infectious material, contacts your eyes, mouth, mucous membranes, or open skin. A sharps injury is an incident involving a puncture with a potentially contaminated object and is especially hazardous. For skin contact, wash the area thoroughly with soap and water. Flush splashes to the nose or mouth with water. For eye contact, flush with clean water or a flushing solution. If you have blood or OPIM on your clothing, Remove it carefully.
dispose of the contaminated clothing in a designated biohazard waste receptacle. Exposure incidents must be reported to a supervisor for documentation. Your company will make a free confidential medical evaluation available. It will include a blood test. The company will attempt to locate and get a blood sample from the contamination source. If you have not already received a hepatitis B vaccination, it will be made available to you. If you observe an injury, assume that all blood and OPIM is infectious. Notify someone who is trained and equipped to respond properly. If you are trained to provide first aid or perform cleanup, follow established safe work practices. Use personal protective equipment. Follow the company cleanup and disposal procedures. Employers with occupational bloodborne pathogens exposure hazards must have a written exposure control plan. This plan contains a list of jobs and tasks that have occupational exposure. Engineering controls. Safe work practices. Required personal protective equipment. Housekeeping methods. Waste disposal. Administrative and documentation requirements. And much more. The employer must inform employees how they can receive a copy of this plan and include an explanation of its contents as part of the bloodborne pathogens training. Bloodborne pathogens are infectious diseases spread in blood and other bodily fluids. Universal precautions assume that all blood and bodily fluids are infected. Vaccinations are a safe and effective method for preventing bloodborne illness. Engineering controls eliminate exposure risks and are the preferred protection method. Work practice controls reduce exposure risk by changing the work task. Washing hands frequently is an important work practice control. The workplace must be clean and disinfected regularly. PPE is required when engineering controls cannot eliminate the hazard. Watch for the signs, labels and colors that warn you of a bloodborne pathogen hazard. Use designated waste disposal containers. Report bloodborne pathogen exposure incidents to your supervisor. Know and understand the employer's bloodborne pathogen exposure control plan. <laughs>